Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board's March 25th meeting. And just want to advise everyone, as always, that these meetings are recorded. I will ask for a roll call, please. Frank West here. Lilia Maselli here. Greg Bendel's here. And Garrett and Palmer's here. I'd like everyone to rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business will be transmitting of Treasury warrants. Treasury warrant number 2437, 2437W, 2437T, 2437S, 2438, 2438W, and 2438T. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Can I, can I have, dis can I have discussion? Now. With discussion? Can I have discussion? Because I had something on, uh, I've, I've got a bill on that, or re uh, reimbursement, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna leave the room for a sec. Okay. How can you vote on something that there's no dollar amount when there's an expenditure? Can you give us a dollar amount? Okay, again, we have a motion on the table. Any other discussions or? No, oh, it's been second. It's already second. been second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? No. Next, we'll be approving uh, minutes from the March 12th, 2024 meeting, a March 13th, 2024 meeting, and a March 18th, 2024 meeting. Thank Do you. I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the March 12, 2024 meeting. Second. Didn't want to get into all those in favor? That was for all of them? No, it's for March 12th. March 12th. Motion that we approve March 13th. Second. All those in favor? Motion to approve March 18th. Second. All those in favor? Now our first appointment, Patrick. I'm going to make a motion to open the public meeting. Mr. Chair, I move that we open the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Public hearing is open regarding the 4th of July committee's <coughs> recommendations for our uh, carnival. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good evening. Good, thank you. It's nice to be back. Nice to see you all. Um, so, good evening. My name is Patrick Giroux, resident of Wilmington, and I preside over Wilmington's 4th of July Committee. Tonight, I look forward to sharing the exciting logistics of the 2024 Fun on the Fourth celebration, our 42nd anniversary of celebrating our nation and spirit of the community. Before I begin my presentation, I wanted to share a quick note of the committee's formation. In 1980, Wilmington was celebrating a significant milestone, the 250th anniversary of the town's formation. The town's board of selectmen formed a committee of 13 volunteer residents for the 250th anniversary committee chaired by Joan Maga. The committee plans an exciting roster of events and activities to celebrate the anniversary, including a weekend for residents and friends of the town. The four-day celebration over the course of 4th of July weekend was themed the Year of the Family, we're doing it in Wilmington. Activities included a carnival, nightly concerts, class versus class sporting competitions, fraternal organization sponsored meals on the common, family games, various displays and exhibitions, and to end the fun, an incredible fireworks show. Sound familiar? Joe Maga concluded her remarks in the 250th anniversary book by writing, we hope family awareness, participation, and involvement in Wilmington has just begun, end quote. The residents enjoyed the celebration so much, there was an appetite for more. As a result, many of those residents on the 250th committee spun off and formed what's known today as the 4th of <coughs> July committee. Since the 4th of July's committee 
Since the 4th of July Committee's incorporation in 1981, our mission has stayed the same. Provide the residents and friends of Wilmington with a first-class, fun-filled, entertaining, and affordable event for all members of the family. We have proudly produced 41 celebrations and are here tonight to discuss and hopefully receive approval for our 42nd. This year, we seek to present the 42nd annual Fun on the 4th from June 26th until June 30th with a rain date of July 1st. This year's logistics have been top of mind and carefully crafted as we are aware and acknowledge the large-scale construction operation of the town's new town hall and school administration building. In September 2023, I met with Consigli, Chairman De Palma, members of the town's public buildings department, as well as the OPM of the new town hall school administration building. We walked the 4th of July parking lot, discussed ways to use the lot for the carnival, and paused construction for a weekend to conduct the celebration. Later that month, we learned of a change in construction plans, the need to install underground water infiltration systems for the new building. We were told the parking lot will be offline for the summer and alternative plans needed to be made for the carnival as a lot will undergo extensive work the day the students complete the school year. The committee met and discussed a plan B. Do we cancel the celebration for the year, move it to a new location, or work with what we have? We all know what moving the celebration did years at the Shriners. While incredibly thankful for their donation of the property, given its remote location for fun on the 4th, participation was down by several accounts, community booths could not meet their fundraising goals, and the location was not adequate for neighboring communities, transportation, and ADA standards. This year, the committee evaluated nearly all public and private locations in town, most notably the Textron Field in Yentile Park. Perhaps the carnival could take place on the field, activities in Yentile, and fireworks from the town park. As logistics unfolded, we faced some challenges. Where would people park? We feared folks may use private lots on 38, which would result in those walking Route 38 to the celebration, and as most of us know, much of 38 is dark with no sidewalks. We also face the fireworks issue. If we launch from the town park with the viewing area of Yentile and Textron, the size of the shells may force a 12-hour road, road closure of Route 38 from Woburn to Wilmington, and we did not want to seize the daily operation of traffic and commerce to and from Woburn. So we discussed and mapped out our plan we are here to present tonight. Shut down the high school parking lot for up to 10 days for the carnival. Use the town common for our family programming and utilize neighboring church lots for parking in addition to state-owned lots around the area for satellite parking with transportation. We met with Superintendent Brands and his staff several times since the fall. We formulated a plan to use the WHS lot and minimize disruption to the school department's summer programming. As Superintendent Brand's recommendation, a meeting was held with the temporary town manager, school department leadership, superintendent of public buildings, superintendent of public works, the fire chief and police chief in February to map out the celebration and discuss logistics. The meeting was productive and formed what is presented tonight. In fact, to display the commitment and unwavering support of the celebration, all members of that meeting signed a letter of support of the event's logistics. The letter is a testament of the event and its importance to residents by those who have oversight on safety, municipal services, and inner workings of the town. Also notable, the committee, at its sole expense, will be renting shuttle buses this summer for the summer school programming so we can shuttle staff to and from the St. Thomas parking lot for parking since the teachers will be losing the uh, main high school lot for a couple of days. This year, as the committee continues to embark on new initiatives to gather and celebrate the town we all love, we are introducing Wilmington Night on Wednesday, June 26th. The evening will be held on the Common and will feature community booths, live music, food trucks, family entertainment, and more. There will be no carnival on Wilmington Night. The carnival will open on Thursday, June 27th and run until Sunday, June 30th with a rain date of Monday, July 1st. The proposed layout of the carnival is displayed on the poster board. And per the state fire marshal, there is a safety area around the midway to provide easy access for emergency personnel in the event of medical or fire emergency. I will also add the layout is subject to the Wilmington Fire Department and the carnival vendor will meet with the fire department regularly during setup to ensure a safe layout and compliance with law. We are seeking the board's permission to authorize carnival equipment drop off and set up Sunday, June 23rd through Wednesday, June 26th from 7 until 10.30 p.m. 
Breakdown is scheduled from Sunday, June 30th, 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. unless it rains and the rain date is exercised, which will result in the breakdown to be conducted on July 1st. I will pause here and state that it is not abnormal in the industry nor in communities that have carnivals in residential areas to add restrictions on setup and breakdown hours. Carnival staff that work the setup and breakdown are often available during the nighttime only as it is side work or a second job to them. To get a taste of a typical breakdown, I actually attended a carnival in Wakefield last year and observed the breakdown operation. Wakefield has a carnival which is surrounded by neighborhoods and houses. The breakdown consisted of folding up rides, moving trailers, and sanitizing the site. If breakdown is not permitted on the final evening, the staff need to come back at daylight the next day and perform the work. As such, limited staff are available, which results in a multi-day breakdown operation. Our goal in Wilmington moving forward is to permit the overnight breakdown, allow the amusements to move out of Wilmington, and grant the parking lot back to the, to the school department or municipality for their use. We have limited time, especially this year, so we are truly up against the clock. In addition to the carnival, we expect all elements of the celebration to remain the same. A concert series on the common nightly, community booth participation, family day on Saturday, merchandise sales in the 4th of July headquarters, dinners on the common, and of course, two nights of incredible fireworks. As I mentioned when I was here a few months ago, the carnival is not only a major attraction for fun on the 4th, but also the major revenue generator, which raises the funds for the fireworks, family day, music, and more. This year, we expect the event to be at or around six figures to operate. Much of the cost is attributed to the hard cost of insurance. Some may not be aware that the insurance industry overall is foreseeing major cost increases. The committee takes out special event insurance for all of our events and provides adequate coverage to the town to conduct the event. Back to the event. Uh, portable restrooms will be throughout the Midway and Common. Parking will be available at St. Thomas and Abundant Life for handicapped parking. We will also operate a satellite parking lot this year at the MBTA Main Street Station, which will offer free event parking and free transportation to and from the event nightly. A special thank you to our state delegation for making this happen. In the event of sudden severe weather, Wilmington High School will provide shelter. Church Street will be closed to, to vehicles during the hours of the celebration. Middlesex Ave will remain open. As has been the case in the past, we will have frequent conversations with the police and fire departments, town manager's office, health department, and building department to plan a successful event. As mentioned on the carnival application, safety is our top priority. In a case such as this year where we are operating next to an event, or I'm sorry, next to a construction site, we have already begun conversations and planning to secure the construction site. Deploy safety assets both inside and outside the construction area and also continuous monitoring to mitigate any potential issue. In closing, it is with our full intention to continue our long-standing partnership with the town, its neighbors, public service leadership, and key event stakeholders to provide a safe, fun, and memorable experience for the town. It is with full confidence that the committee has conducted its due diligence and thoughtful planning to make the 42nd annual Fun on the Fourth a reality. The event is not possible without the select board's authorization. And to go back to the opening of this presentation, this event is what makes Wilmington unique and unforgettable. I think I speak on behalf of, be I think I speak on behalf, if not many, but Fun on the Fourth is what makes Wilmington, Wilmington. It culminates the community spirit and pride to be from this town. Tonight, I am here to seek the following approvals. First, grant permission of the 4th of July committee to use town common and high school parking lot for fun on the 4th activities. Second, permit temporary signage around the town common and tennis courts for event signage and marketing. Third, as has been in the case in the past, but to restrict hawkers, peddlers, and transient vendors within a one half mile radius of the Wilmington town common and high school campus. And fourth and final, but to please grant approval for the carnival application per section 4.1.9 of the Wilmington Zoning Bylaws. Thank you for your time, and my fellow committee members, residents, and friends of the celebration behind me, as well as myself, look forward to your questions and comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with uh, any board members have any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman? Mr. West? First of all, I have two words to say to you and your committee. Thank you. For 43 years, and I believe, Jack, I think you've been around since 
1981 when it first started. You know, it's just been, you know, to, to all the volunteers that help out. And, and again, I, I make that word clear, volunteers. It takes 11 months for you guys to put this thing together and you get paid zero. So your, your, your payment, if you will, is the satisfaction of all the, the putting this together and the success of being able to say it happened. You know, I've been, I've been around for most, if not all, of those 41 carnivals. We've been through rainstorms when the, when the gazebo, the, not the gazebos, but the, um, yeah, the, tents. the tents collapsed. I helped pull tent poles in the pouring, driving rain. We've had the, you know, the, the sunshine. You know, so, it, you know, it's, a, it's just a beautiful community event. And as far as from the vendor booths, I agree with you. I mean, for full disclosure, I help run two of them. I help run the Minutemen Breakfast. I help run the Troop and Pack 136 chili and taco booth. So plug for buying breakfast and chili and tacos. Uh, but again, you know, but it's great. I mean, not only do you have, you know, families get together, you have friends get together that haven't seen each other since the last 4th of July, and they leave and they say, hey, I'll see you, on the, I'll see you next year on the 4th. And that's how it is. The booths that I see, you have a lot of, uh, young young people that are interacting with adults, making change, making food. I mean, it's an educational experience as well as a fun experience. So I see, you know, I see no reason why not to support this. I, I you know, obviously like to hear if there's any resident issues or my, obviously my fellow board members, but I think this is a great event, great timing, you know, it's just perfect for our town. And, and again, thank you all. Thank you. Else have any comments? Mr. Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pat, thank you very much for the presentation, and I and I agree. Thank you for your your hard work here and your committee's hard work. Uh, certainly, <coughs> a lot goes into it, and uh, sp especially this year, right? I mean, obviously, we've had fantastic um, events in the past, but uh, most of them have kind of been uh, in a similar layout in a similar location this year. Thrown a couple curveballs, and I think you guys have adapted very well, and I appreciate that. Uh, glad to see that you have the support of uh, the department heads uh, and uh, you know obviously we're looking forward to this event I mean I'm really proud of being able to bring my own children there now you know we, we got here later we came we did, my family got here in 83 so uh, we haven't enjoyed all of them but uh, really really uh, have something that my kids look forward to uh, our neighbors everybody so uh, looking forward to it and uh, certainly look forward to the uh, community feedback here as well, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pat. Nice presentation. Um, fun of the fourth. It's, it's always something to look forward to. Uh, I participated from, from day one down there with the uh, Sons of Italy. Um, just a couple questions, if you don't mind. Um, you mentioned that the equipment drop-off is going to start on June 23rd because it says June 22nd and uh so we intended on the 22nd the high school um, or the school department got called a week ago or so looking to make a little few uh, you know a few bucks by renting out the high school campus to a private uh, corporation so um, I believe it's a dance recital or you know something of that nature uh, so we will pivot and we will begin set up the day after to allow such to occur all right, so June 23rd set up until June 26th. Mm -hmm. And what is, what's the time frame on that? So um, equipment drop-off slash setup, we are seeking 7 a.m. through 10.30 p.m. Equipment setup in the past typically operates during the uh, daytime hours, and we would like to exercise it through the evening just as a buffer if need be. Okay. Because there was no time on the application. There is a time on page two. Um, it's under the time, date of equipment drop off slash setup. Um, and yes, it says set up Monday, June 24th through Wednesday, June 26th, 7 a.m. through 10 30 p.m. Right, I see that. The drop off part. Okay. Above. The, I didn't drop see off, so, there. okay, yeah, so. Same, right? Yeah, that uh, typically mirrors. Okay. Um, yeah, the same thing. And in the past, when was it? It was until. Uh, in the in the past, it was until what eight eight o'clock. Uh, so you're going to go up in a couple of two and a half hours on that. Uh, 
Uh, yes, let's see. Um, the vendor can construct between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. was the 2023 Board of Appeals application. Um, so on the 26th, it sounds like it's going to be a great night. Wilmington night mm -hmm. is the 26th, and they're still going to, the carnival still going to be setting up on the 26th when there's going to be activity. Yes, the, um, you don't see that the state typically, okay. yeah, the, the state typically comes in for ride inspections the, the day prior. Um, so I'd imagine, you know, 90% of the midway will be set up. It will be closed. Um, it's, it's not going to be 100% fenced off. So can, can, can folks walk around it? I'm sure they can, but it will not be an active construction zone the day before. And it, you mentioned that you're going to have food trucks. Mm -hmm. um, where are they going to be located? So this year, Church Street will be closed. Um, in the past, Middlesex Ave has been closed. Um, so to be honest, Wilmington Night is not totally built out yet because I you know, would like the board's approval to have the full uh, duration of the event. Once, once we flesh out the details tonight, the intention is to perhaps put a food truck or two on Church Street with the road being closed already. Um, just to provide some uh, food for you know folks that are attending in terms of meals and whatnot, uh, we're actually seeking to partner with the Shawshine Tech this year. They they have a mobile food truck, um, so we'd love to bring them in on Wednesday evening should they be available. Are the, are the vendors going to be able to participate, like the Boy Scouts and the yes. Girl Scouts yep. and the cheerleaders, mm -hmm. the same night as the food trucks? Yeah, everything is starting a little late this year. As you know, we typically meet with the vendors early winter, opposed to early spring. But because this meeting is you know and end of March now. Uh, the community booths are permitted to be open on that evening on, on Wilmington night. Um, and, you know, as, as you know, we uh, don't like anybody to be selling anything that other booths are selling. So the intention is the food truck will, will sell an item that the other groups are not selling. So there's no competition. Okay. That's good. I want to protect the vendors. Absolutely. Way. Yep. Yep. It's, it's a very coveted tradition. Yeah, you know, everybody okay. can sell water, but, uh, you know, you can't sell anything else that, that conflicts. So this is a fifth night that we're adding in, right? It's we are. typically four nights, but we're adding in a fifth night. So back in its heyday, it was between it was five. five and seven nights. That's right. Um, That's right. We are sticking to four nights of the carnival and just a couple hours for this Wilmington night. Um, the intention of Wilmington Night is not every child in Wilmington, not, not every family in Wilmington either has the chance to go to the carnival or, or, or can go to the carnival. Maybe people travel, but uh, people like to come together on happy occasions. So our intention on Wilmington Night was to get the kids, you know, a few hours after school, come on down to the common. We're going to have our stage set up, so we're going to get local music on the common to, you know, as a performance. Almost think of it as the rec department's concerts on the common. You know, you have a nice music um, event. You have some, some kids' activities. Um, you know, the street will be closed, so, you know, it's nice and safe for everybody to wander around. Um, but we're, you know, not looking to program a lot. I'm not looking to ask the committee to, you know, expend many more hours than they already are. Um, so it's just, it's a light introduction to Fun on the Fourth. Folks can come in and get schedules. Just, you know, build, build some hype for the event. You're talking about Midway. I don't know what Midway is. Uh, is that a new ride that's being added? Um, carnivals are also called Midways. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what do you have for a breakdown between family rides for the, for the young kids and, and rides for the yep. bigger kids? So per the application this board prepared, um, the, uh, we, have to, uh, you know, we have to abide by the fact that um, this, this board would, would like a 50-50 split or at least some, some sort of equal split amongst major rides and family rides. Um, this is a family event. I have no intention, and quite frankly, our carnival vendor does not have the capacity to do 100% major rides. You know, we need to incorporate a lot of kids' rides. Um, on the carnival map, we'll uh, do our best to put a lot of the uh, family rides together as we have typically done on the Swain parking lot, so we can kind of keep that, you know, children's area um, we uh, like the event to be something that, uh, you know, parents can, can see from end to end. So, you know, we're trying to maintain that by ke keeping the smaller footprint. Um, but, yes, there'll, there'll be an equal split amongst major and uh, family rides. Okay. That's good to know because that was one of my concerns. I have the sure. same amount for the 
younger kids as yeah. for the bigger kids. Yep, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, we could we you know, we could contract a carnival vendor that only operates large amusement rides, but we have no intention. We keep it local, we keep it small. Um, they they have a wonderful assortment of rides that please every age. One of my concerns I saw for the first time is that you know, I think you did it at the Fall Fest. You you're doing inflatables. And, and, yes. And, and the inflatables are going in the tennis, uh, tennis court, court mm-hmm. in the basketball court, which is kind of concerning. I understand that you're using cement bags to weigh them down. Sometimes you, you for big winds, you see those things going up mm-hmm. if they're not really tied down tight. Yep. But my concern is is damage that possibly could be ca- caused to, on the courts mm-hmm. that are utilized by you know, varsity and sure. JV and freshmen. And, yep. and I remember, you know, we used to use the courts uh, for, for, the, um, for the food mm-hmm. um, way back in the day, the old mm-hmm. tennis yep. courts. Yep. And it, it, they were a mess. After, yeah, after yeah they used done. to put rides and, and in I, there. And yeah. I don't, you know, I just hate to see this, you know, be damaged because yep. I don't know, I, I guess the town will be on the hook for, for repaving and, and fixing, are you taking out, you talked about insurance, is that going to be included for damages? So as has court? been the case in the past with the contract that the committee issues to any vendor, there is damage clauses in there. The contractor in whatever capacity is required to repair any damages. Um, we met with the DPW, uh, this was probably in October, we uh, did a site walk and we specifically spent a good amount of time in the tennis courts because we were looking at the possibility of having a few. It's uh, not going to be, you know, it, not, not every square inch of that uh, tennis court is going to be filled with inflatables. So we'll, we'll have a few inflatables. This, this, this map is a rough depiction of about five or so. Um, weight, weighted down by sandbags. The um, D- DPW did uh, not see any issues at the time uh, because of the um, anchoring device. If, if it was being hammered into the ground, then obviously we're talking about issues, but um, there, there is no major concern from the town at this point. And we are not going to do anything in that second tennis court, so uh, safety is, is top priority. This uh, main tennis court has uh, two or three entrances and exits, and the immense or I'm sorry, in the event of emergency, you need to make sure there's adequate exit. That first tennis court only has one way of egress. So uh, that, that tennis court will likely be locked up for the week or um, will I just leave it open so, so folks can play basketball, but I'll leave that at the police department's discretion. Yeah, I know, I, I, I may be getting a, a little picky with, with this next comment, but I remember at the, um, the Yentile field, the new turf field, I would see they don't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people with chairs, with spike chairs and stuff, mm-hmm. they go out in that field and put holes in it. I just want to make sure that that's going to be okay. Yep, yeah, no, everybody that uh, plans this event lives in the town, and we want to make sure that, you know, the town is treated with adequate um, care and love. So we'll uh, make sure whatever we can do. You know, if the inflatables go up and we notice there's some scuffs to the tennis court, then we'll just pull it. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on it. How about the storage of the, the carnival vehicles? Where will they be put? Are they going to be? It's a great question uh, because in the past we've had a bigger parking lot uh, so the rides could be brought in and staged. Uh, this year we're obviously tight on real estate and tight on time. So the, the town offered um, to the committee last summer as we started planning for this event to use uh, municipal uh, facilities to stage some of the equipment. Uh, the carnival will, will most likely, um, their their schedule is not fully ironed out yet for the year, but they'll most likely be coming from another event on Saturday or Sunday. So as they roll into town, they'll have uh, various places to stage equipment, such as the Wildwood School, which as we know is is vacant right now. Um, and also the public buildings department was was offered as a location. I mean, we're not talking about dozens of trailers. They, they have a very good way of uh, organizing logistics. So We'll have to make sure that the equipment is brought in and staged in adequate places that works for both the vendor and us. And and finally, this board cannot um, it has no jurisdiction over schools and school property. Sure. So in order for you to get the carnival on the school property, mm-hmm. along with the various hours of operation, you have to go to the school committee. Mm-hmm. to get their permission for that 
and I know you're seeking that permission tonight from us, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, you're going to have to go there, yep. I believe, We're, first. We've, we've been talking to Superintendent <coughs> France in September about this, as well as school committee members. They're, they're fully apprised and, you know, assume we're coming to them. Okay. So you'd have to go to them for this? Um, either to the school committee or by way of uh, a permit through the school department. They're, they're, um, after tonight's meeting, it's, it's my uh, mandate, if you will, to follow up with the superintendent about how this uh, conversation went, and he will um, discuss the authorization protocol, whether it's through school committee or through his permitting office which we have had conversations with both and we're prepared to go either route. So tonight you're looking for us to approve just the town common because we can't approve anything else because that's all under the school committee's purview. So understanding that this board has purview over carnivals and the school committee does not, um, I would imagine that this board needs to issue some, some sort of conditional ab approval or perhaps recommendation for the school committee. Uh, but the school committee does not have jurisdiction over carnivals. Right. I, I think I would feel more comfortable personally if you got permission for use of the facility before we approve a carnival. That's, that's sure. just me. Yep. Um, and, so. and I was advised reverse from the school department. It was to talk oh, to you really? guys first. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> so, you know, it, yeah, it's a bunch of finger pointing, but we're just, yeah. you know, we're new to this process. You know, at least in my tenure with the committee, I have not sought approvals on uh, school property. Although last year for Fall Fest, I uh, did receive uh, approval for the high school parking lot for parking. Um, that did not need to go through the school committee. That I went through Superintendent Brand's permitting office. So we'll, we'll uh, chat with him accordingly and see what he wants to do. We appreciate your comments. Um, just thank you and the committee for everything you do. I know this was almost like starting from scratch this year, um, and I know you're, you know, up to the uh, 11th hour already with, with mm -hmm. this, so um, appreciate all the work. My only question is, and I appreciate the explanation on the late, you know, 2.30 a.m., I understand that. What do, how long are they typically out there? Do you think it'll go to 2.30? I'm not holding you to it. I'm just kind of getting yeah, your opinion on it. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, when I attended Wakefield last year, I believe their event ended around 11 p.m. or so, and they were probably out there until 3 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, 3, 3.30. So when I met with the Carnival Company a couple of months ago, I said, what, what can we do to make this work for both you guys, us, and the residents? You know, we need to find a happy medium. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand that some folks in this town want the carnival to seize operation as soon as the fireworks go off. Mm -hmm. Totally understand. I also get the carnival perspective. Their, their staff is generally only available in the evening, and if they come back the next day, they have limited capacity, which means the equipment takes longer to break down. Um, so we came up with a happy medium of, of 2.30. Will the midway be broken down 100%? No. But will it be broken down a lot more than what it has been in the past? Absolutely. Um, the amount of work that they, they can do in a short window will, will I, you know, I think it'll amaze everybody. I'm asking, you know, folks to see how it goes this year because we haven't permitted it such in a long time. Uh, when it was at the old high school campus, um, there, there was no restriction on, on breakdown. Yeah. Uh, they, they could pull out that night if they wanted to. Um, this, this restriction came when the carnival moved across the street which we respect and we understand, but we've been now following that, um, you know, that, that, that mandate for the last several years, so we'd like to try something new. Okay. Um, we are at risk of losing carnivals in Wilmington if we continue to impose this restriction. There are really only three carnival companies that um, function in the New England area, especially with an event of this size. Wilmington's con you know, considered small uh, for, for carnivals, and if we continue to impose limitations on setup and breakdown hours, then we are at risk of losing carnivals. Okay. Um, Andover actually just lost their carnival last week uh, because really? they put restrictions in and the carnival vendor pulled out uh, because they just can't abide or, you know, they, they just can't operate in, in, in a financially, um, you know, responsible way if they continue with this. Okay. No, I appreciate that. So, yeah, we'll uh, continue to, uh, last year we, we had police staged at the carnival until the last vehicle pulled out. I'm happy to work with the chief again this year to make sure that, you know, if, if a dispatch is being inundated with, with calls about noise and you know things things of that sort, will I work with them? Okay. I am personally on site until the last person leaves on that final night. Um, so you know, our success 
is is everybody's success in this scenario. Yep. No, I understand. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I echo everything my uh, co-members here have said. I'm very impressed that you were, be, you were able to take this in such a short period of time and shift locations on it. Uh, I commend your committee. Uh, and again, I just want everyone to understand that the volunteers, and, but this is Wilmington. Mm -hmm. This is Wilmington. I hear it all the time. I know Wilmington, and when you ask them from what, they say the carnival. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to keep the tradition moving. As far as the uh, school department having to prove this, uh, I can understand that where it's on their, technically on their property. Uh, but I feel that we could pass this on a stipulation that the school committee authorizes it also. Is that comfortable for my board members? Well, I would make a motion to um, approve I would make, the, I'm not making a motion, I'm just having a discussion. I would make the motion that we could um, approve it contingent on, you know, the, the school committee. Appropriate uh, school person. Yeah, approving, yeah. you know, the use of the thing. Yeah. So I, I think we can approve on our end and then contingent. That yeah. way, if they approve it, you're all set. If they don't, sure. uh, which we won't yeah. go there, but I'd uh, recommend that you uh, conditionally approve it upon the school department's approval. Um, right, school well, department. You know the overarching theme. Yep. We don't know if it's the committee or the department that has the final stamp right. of approval, but we'll yep. seek that. Okay. Uh, this time I'll uh, accept some public comments. Please stay on track when you do speak, and state your name and your address, please. Does anybody like to speak? Good evening. <clears throat> I want to um, thank you, Mr. Please. Um, you know what? I think I'm just going to speak anonymously because um, okay, it's not Mr. really important Obama, who I am. Go ahead. Um, just want to uh, thank Mr. Drew for being here and uh, recognize you for your high level of intellect and looking at your presentation tonight and listening to you. Um, just the obvious, tremendous improvement in professionalism, and I thank you for that. Um, I did um, sketch out a little profile for you um, so that you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I've been going to the um, finance committee meetings, and one of the issues um, that was talked about tonight was the, the new sc school administration and town hall building. Sir, we're speaking on the carnival only. I understand that. Yeah, that's, well, that's why I rose. Finance. So um, this here is the site where the carnival is going to be. And uh, I just wanted to point out that I spoke to the building inspector and I spoke to the health director, and both of them said that there's been no permit issued for the new town hall or school administration building, nor has there been um, uh, any type <coughs> of uh, septic system design or anything like that submitted to the, uh, to the um, Board of Health. Um, but the profile that I gave you, uh, looking and thinking ahead for future carnivals, um, I think that might be helpful. I, I grew up with um, the Cushing family, who was a very high quality family. And um, one of the things that I learned from them over the years growing up with them is that the carnival business is a very challenging business. And one of the um, most challenging things with a carnival is the weather. Um, and oftentimes they'll set up someplace and it'll rain all weekend. Um, I personally would like to see the carnival there a couple more days, um, especially when you're talking about revenue sharing. Um, so that's what I wanted to mention to you about the carnival. Thank but you. as far as the site goes, this particular site here, as you know, the, if you look at that profile that I uh, drew for you, uh, that was the Swain School site, and the water table was down three feet. And so if you Mr. look at McDonald, that profile, we're discussing the carnival. I understand and, that. And I well, you're, you're is this the last year? Is, is this you're going a, way me, off topic? Is you're this the last year? Off topic, a question sir. for you. you is this a, just a question for you. Is this the last year for the carnival? We don't know. Okay. So the reason why I rise is I'm hoping that it's not. 
But the reason why I gave that profile is that taking into consideration the water infiltration system and the septic system, that grade would have to increase to be seven feet above Mr. the McDonald, existing grade. Mr. McDonald, we're discussing about the carnival yeah. today, not tomorrow that. or anything else. I it's understand today. That. So but stay on track about the carnival today. This gentleman. Don't worry about everything else later, sir. This, if you have an issue with it, you can bring it up I'm, to I, any department you'd I like. Think it's, I think it's wonderful that Mr. Giroux was professional enough to bring these very nice plans here, which depict the site, and it shows the area of the carnival. So thinking ahead for future carnivals and keeping in mind the area that we have to uh, place the carnival in, this here would greatly diminish when you have slopes. So I, I, I know you can't we're going know you, to discuss I, that. I know you don't have an engineering background. No, I don't, I, sir. I, and, and I know you don't understand this, but Mr. Drew is a very not highly for, to this, intellectual it's not individual. This I make a motion to close the hearing. I, I, I just would like Ms. Mr. Giroux to Mr. know McDonald. that I would like to see you sitting behind that desk instead of in front of it. And I hope the people of Wilmington write your name in as a candidate. Why didn't Thank you, you run? Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. If it's somebody yeah, else, I apologize. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yes, woman in the back. I'm Suzanne Crooker. I'm at 135 Middlesex Ave. And I speak all the time, Patrick, and he knows us quite well. My concerns are much the same as they have always been. When the carnival and related events came to the Swain and the Common in 16, under the aegis of the town, the town was very conscious of the fact it would be the first time going in a residential neighborhood. And I think it has worked out. I think it has done that way with limited hours of delivery and setup as part of the application. We are a quiet residential neighborhood, and I don't think anybody can appreciate that unless you live in our neighborhood and know how quiet we are. Um, we commend you for all the work that you've done, and I was pleased to hear you're your listening to our concerns. I'm, I still am not in favor of the well after midnight breakdowns and the trucks coming. Last year there were trucks coming in between 11, 11 p.m. and 5 a.m., and I don't think that's fair to us. And I think that that's important. Um, your application was sparse on a lot of details, but I think through questions from the members of the board, many of those inf that information was filled in. You have indicated that it's 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. To, to bring things in, not overnight. Is that correct? I'll have to refer to my application. To bring in rides and, and trucks? 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Okay but not overnight. 7 a.m. to 10.30. Okay. And I think that that's important to adhere to those regulations um, because last year there were things coming in well after midnight. Um, and so that's my request to you is to do that. I also am concerned to some of, I had other things to think that were then answered. Um, and we enjoy it. We like having this here. It's, it makes it a lot of fun. We as a Butters, though, have some other concerns that the rest of you may not have. And my question is whether it be the usual snow fences along a Butters property. As I tell you every year, Suzanne, as you have my phone number, <laughs> if there are any issues, you call me, and okay. we'll make sure they're dealt with. Um, will there be no smoking signs for us? As I tell you in the okay. past, <laughs> I'm just I'm there's <laughs> issues, and we'll, and we'll address them accordingly. Okay. It is not my intention to blow this up to anything that it is not in the past. No, I understand. I like to it. keep this a community event, and if there's issues, you can call me. Okay. Because what happens is that while the town is not smoke is smoke free, our houses are not, and so we become the de facto smoking. And so that's a concern, and I will be in touch with you, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Okay. But again, keep it keep in mind we would not like the overnights. Okay. Thank you. And it might still with is there any other individual who would like to speak on this? Mr. Chair, just two questions, just to help the residents out as well. Sure. Uh, when they do the breakdown, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that they're going to need lighting. Yep. The lighting will be directed <coughs> on the event mm -hmm. area. So, so that it's because Adam Street does have some residential, yes. we don't want to disturb 
on this map right here, there is a blue box. Right here. This is the generator. The generator has a light tower on it. Um, I imagine there might be a few other lighting sources as well, but that is the main. I don't know how many volts does that thing give off. A lot of volts. <laughs> 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 or, or watts, I guess. Um, so that's, you know, when, when you're in a construction zone, you need lighting. Um, the way we are designing the midway is we have basically fun houses here and trailers here to basically block the residents view into the carnival because as we know and as we hear the residents don't like to see the carnival so we will do our best to create a buffer um, and I, I imagine that'll help with the lighting pollution as well and um, do you know the travel of the trucks will they will they go down it's a good question. Um, much is to be determined with town leadership as to where we can stage the equipment. Um, well, some not necessarily stage the equipment, sure. but to have like the, I don't know, the 18 wheels or the big truck, do they, uh, you're going to drive them down Adam Street where it's residential or you're going to keep them on the main drag? Well, you know well yeah, we um, work with them to design trucking routes. Um, as, as most of you know, the Carnival Company lives and works in Wilmington. Um, they actually live next to the 4th of July building now, so they're quite familiar with the area. They want to respect the neighborhood as much as anybody else does. So, you know, I can't speak on behalf of this year's trucking route. Much is to be determined, but uh, we'll, we'll be as mindful as we can with that. Any other questions? We have a motion on the floor uh, to adjourn this meeting. No, close right. the hearing. Close the hearing. Close the hearing, excuse me. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? The hearing is closed. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Um, if we could just vote on the other matters as yep. well. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, that's what we're going to do now. Mr. Chairman, may I just make a quick comment? Go ahead. I know I've recognized a couple of people in the crowd, but there's one other person that uh, has been instrumental to this Fourth of July for many years, and that's Bev Dalton. And I just, I know she's done a tremendous amount of work over the years, and I, and I know she doesn't do it for the accolades, but I want to publicly say thank you to you as well. Thanks, Bev. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's take a motion on uh, accepting the application stipulated on the uh, School department approving. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Contingent upon the school department. Contingent, yeah. yep. Yes. All those in favor? So be. Now we'll go to, let's see. Seven. Do I do seven or six? You just did six. Six, right? Mr. Six. Chair, I move that we grant the request of the 4th July celebration to use Town Common High School parking lot Wednesday, June 26th through Sunday, June 30th to place promotional signs at the Wilmington High School tennis court fences. And as it reads, and board to consider item number seven. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Well, With discussion? Uh, yeah, discussion. I mean, this is contingent upon a school Sc committee approval. Approval. School department. School department. Or school department. Or school department. One or the right. other. Yeah. I don't think Patrick knows which one you mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's why we Whether yeah. it's the school, school department, department or the um, superintendent's office, or whether it's a school committee. However, so this board does have the purview of the town common. Right. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to amend my motion <laughs> to include, <laughs> as was mentioned by my colleague, Mr. Kyra. To include approval of. Uh, School well, department slash school committee. Well, to approve the use of the town Our common, common is, uh, and is our jurisdiction. To, right, and uh, to approve the uh, tennis courts. Ten tennis, tennis courts in the school parking lot based upon, well, we can't approve it. Hold on. We can approve the town common, but we can't approve the tennis courts. The school. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. You, what I think you're looking for is to approve the use of the common on the 26th for the Wilmington night, and then all the this the second uh, article seven. I mean, what to consider seven would be contingent on the. Don't forget well, the municipal lot. No wait. And any other what, I, um, Mr. Town Manager, I think we're looking to approve the use of the town common from the 26th to the 30th that's with the rain right. date of the 1st. That's mm -hmm. right. Right? Yeah. Um, 
Can take that as one motion. Yeah, I, I almost break these up into two motions. Well, you just approved the carnival at the condition of the school department, so we could probably move on from the high school and just focus on the municipal areas right. now. Right, right. And, and let the school department approve the uh, use of their facilities. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Sounds good. Okay. Right. Mr. Chairman, my motion is in rough shape. <laughs> so I'll, I'll you want me to I amend can. your motion? <laughs> well, well, I think we'll, I'll just gonna to go with the uh, low-hanging fruit here. I'd like to move that we uh, approve the 4th of July uh, uh, to uh, put place signs temporarily on the town common and in front of the 4th of July building and to restrict hawk and peddlers uh, within one half mile of the town common during the celebration. How's that? And use of the town common yeah. from 26th. June 26th to June 30th with a rain date of July 1st. Why not? <laughs> Sounds good. How does that sound? Bev, that do that you good? have that? <laughs> <laughs> Put it as a Bendel Kyra Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> motion. It's, it's a big motion. <laughs> okay. okay, so we have. Uh, we have a second on that one. Yep. Do I. See a vote. All those in favor? Five all. Thank you. See you this Thanks, summer. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate sure, it. Make it confusing Friday. for us, though. <laughs> Thank you very so much. We appreciate it. everything. So, Patrick, just to be clear now, you got to go to the school committee and, and approve uh, the, the other portion. Department. Right. Yes. Okay. Yep. Probably send us a memo or something like that. But uh, Yeah. Let Lou know. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Communications. Mr. Chair, we have a memorandum from Brett Swain, the rec director for 2024 Beach Life Tom Beach Lifeguards letter. That is uh, asking again for people. Uh, there's been some issues in the past, a much, a much smaller pool of high school and college students that are looking for employment, other job opportunities, just to name a few. Um, then Brett is also letting us know that he has advertised through all the social media and town website uh, places that he can advertise. Excellent. Next one is a letter from the temporary director of Department of Veteran Services to request to, con to conduct the annual Memorial Day Parade and an invitation to the select board to participate. Thank you. That will be held on Monday, May 27, 2024. As always, the, port, the parade will step off promptly at 10 from the Market Basket parking lot. We'll proceed down Main Street and down Middlesex Ave, ending at the Town Common. And then the services will be at 11 o'clock at the cemetery. Thank you, sir. Mr. Town Manager? Yes. Um, if, if I can participate, I'd love to drive your vehicle again because okay. I, I need a new hip and a new knee. So I'll make sure it's washed and ready for you to go. Right, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'll ride with you simply because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take uh, board to consider number nine, Mr. Chair, that would be yes. the uh, request of Michael Fraught and temporary Department of, Department of Veterans Services Director to conduct the annual Memorial Day Parade as stated on May 27th. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think I can handle this one. I'll go for it if you're okay. <laughs> uh, I, I move that we grant the request of the temporary director of Department of Veterans Services. Now, do we have to add in that Mr. Kyra is going to yeah. be driving the vehicle? <laughs> uh, I'll second that motion. That out. <laughs> All those in favor? And Thank so you. moved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next is a letter from Rondi R. Holland, the resignation from the planning board. Um, this young lady has volunteered 20 plus years wow. on this board. And um, the next member, uh, communication is the letter I sent to her on behalf of the town, acknowledging the, re uh, the receipt of her letter and advising the Director of Planning and Conservation, Valerie Gingrich, Gingrich of your decision. And Valerie has done a really nice job of uh, reaching out to uh, men and women that may be qualified and interested in this position. But uh, on, I continue on on behalf of the Select Board. May I take this opportunity to thank you for the exemplary service you have provided to the community as a member of the Planning Board. Your leadership <clears throat> on the board has contributed greatly to the town's efforts to responsibly manage its growth. And again, as I said it, over 20 years she was on board. Wish her the best. Next one under communications is an invitation to attend the Special Olympics at Wilmington High School on Friday, May 10th, 2024 at 0930 a.m. 
Next one is from Carrie Morris, Senior Management Government and Regulatory Affairs of uh, Xfinity, and effective May 7th, <coughs> Pursuit Channel SD on channels 258, 1238. That's 258 and 1238. Will no longer be available on the same day pursuant. It, channel HD will be added to our channel 1238. Requires HD programming and the X1 box for Xfinity Internet and compatible customer owned devices to view. And that is it um, under communications. The board can consider. I believe we took care of number six. Six, seven, seven, and nine. Next one is the board considered ratification of the temporary town manager appointment of Susan L. Clarkin to the Commission of Disabilities for the term to expire April 30th, 2027. Motion to grant that request, or grant that ratification. Second. All those in favor? Five approved. Thank you. Okay, board to consider 10 is request of Mary DeWitt, Burlington Quilters Guild to place directive, directive and promotional signs on town property Saturday, April 6, 2024, before 9 a.m. and remove them on Sunday. I think she's here. I'm here. On Sunday, April 7, 2024, after I 3 p.m. I brought some signs. I move, I? move to grant the request. <laughs> Second. I brought some signs so you can see what they look like. There you go. Beautiful. Thank you very Great. much. Thank you. You're all okay. set. Come and enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We have a motion that's been seconded. All those in favor? So be it. Good luck. Thank Good you. Luck. Good luck. Enjoy. Okay. And a board to consider request of uh, Beth Rooney, Wilmington High School Football Touchdown Club, to conduct a fundraising car wash on Sunday, June 9th. 2024 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the public Ma building. Mr. G I'm sorry, Mr. Town Manager. She, she came all this way. Do, do you want to like speak? Should she speak on, on the know. event and ask her she about it? And, disrespected the lady. And tell us. Oh, not at all. Not at all. Did you want to speak, Mary? <laughs> You're welcome. To come up. Come yeah. Right. Thank you. It's April 6 and 7. And I like Thank your signs. You. <laughs> and there'll be plenty of signs. You know where the Knights of Columbus yep. is anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. She's all about the boutique. <laughs> Absolutely. <Nice. laughs> and there are, there are quilts to buy and people there to... There will be quilts to buy and in the boutique all handmade items by the members of the Burlington Quilters Guild. And we also do a... a our main goal is we make pillowcases, teddy bears, and quilts for many organizations. We've, we've even, in the past years, brought them by the Wilmington Police to keep them in their trunks if they come across domestics. Aww. And of course, as we well know, how much gear the cops have right now in there. You know, we might revisit that again. And we've done, I think, with Lou, you've done with um, uh, our president, uh, Kathy Bell. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. the Quilts that's, of Valor. That's yes, ma'am. We're also involved with that. So we, we do a lot of charity, but we, we haven't done a quilt show in five years because of COVID. So we're back at it. Awesome. Thank you. Again. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. We wish you the best of luck. Quilts of Valor Thank you. is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> okay. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we grant the request of the Wilmington High School Football Touchdown Club. Second. All those in favor? Mm. Approved. That is it. Chair. No. Public Board. comments. And again, I will ask you to state your name and address. As I stated before, um, I'm not the important issue here. The important issue is um, financial matters because it affects everybody in town. Um, can you see this from where you folks are? This is the $175,000 that the town pays the first, the town pays the first $175,000 for an employee health claim. Um, this one here is a million dollars is being paid into the retirement system 
on top of the regular contributions and past contributions. I stand and I bring this before the board tonight because I've asked you in the past several times, Mr. Chairman, to actually have a meeting to discuss this issue. And you've failed to do that. And I'm disappointed because the people in town that I've talked to, they're wondering what's going on. We're, we're looking to have a town meeting and approve a $130 million budget. We're the um, highway department's looking to hire a guy full time and we could be on the hook for health um, exposure, health consequence exposure of $175,000 before any insurance pays that. And this guy's just gonna be mowing one field. And it's my position that um, this task should be subcontracted out. That way we don't, we're not forced with, Mr. Simaglia, do you have a problem? A nice segue. Do you have a problem? I'm not allowed to speak. You, you just completely disrespected this lady who came out of just her, no, you just completely disrespected <laughs> somebody Ka in town. Uh, Mr. De Palma. No, no, finish up what you want to say, sir. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe yeah. you should pay attention instead of, uh, you know, talking about something that is completely irrelevant. <laughs> so we're looking, we're looking to hire somebody and you're asking the people of Wilmington to fund that and you've failed to have a meeting to have a proper discussion and analysis about this issue. Mr. Kyra was kind enough to at least bring it up, but Mr. Kyra, um, do you plan on like making a motion to have any kind of meeting uh, in the future about th these issues, these important issues? Please direct everything towards the chair, please, through the chair. Would you ask Mr. Kyra if he was planning on having a, making a motion about the OPEB and some of these financial matters? Okay, the other thing is I asked you earlier what the total dollar amount is on the warrants tonight that are being approved. And so, uh, Mr. De Palma, um, can you tell us, first of all, how is it even professional or legal to take a vote at a public meeting when you don't even have the dollar amount? So why, is the else, why is the dollar amount not being stated every single meeting? Is there anything else, sir? Yes. Uh, this question is for, um, I guess, Mr. Kyra and Mrs. Maselli. Since you two were um, voted in to be on the subcommittee to negotiate the contract for the new town manager. Number one, are you planning on having language in that contract that allows him to do any future hiring. <laughs> Number two, are you planning on having anything in that contract that's an incentive? For example, if the new town manager can identify waste, fraud, and abuse, to give him an incentive reward of 5%. For example, if he could identify a million dollars, 5% of that would be $50,000 in his pocket, which would give us $950,000 in savings. And so my question to you, Mrs. Maselli, would you be in favor of that? We are in contract negotiations and I cannot speak of that. I'm not asking you to negotiate with me. You are asking me. me if I would put that in his contract. I cannot I'm, speak I'm on I'm asking his you contract. if you would consider it. I'm not going to speak on his contract. We're in executive session in it. You're in exec Have you met with him yet? We just had our first executive session with our attorney this evening. No. I'm know not going to discuss the town manager's contract with you. It's There's no contract. I'm, I'm just simply I'm making gonna, a suggestion that you consider it. that. I'm not going to discuss contract negotiations with you and what it will or will not Well, include. Mr. Kara, um, I realize that legal matters are not, legal matters in executive session can't be discussed here. But this isn't a legal matter, this is a contractual issue. And do you have any insight 
or any yeah. feeling about an incentive, do you think that that would be a good idea? Thank you for your consideration on that matter. Okay. Um, and Mr. Bendel, um, I did have a question for you. <laughs> Since you're a teacher at the Shawshank Tech, have you seen the Shawshank Tech budget book? Have you read it? Because I didn't want to ask you a question that you weren't familiar with, but since you nodded, you had yes. On the first page, it says, we have absorbed three full-time employee positions that had been funded using ESSR grant funds. Can you tell us what those three positions are? You cannot. Mr. McDonald, so that we'll would look be something that you, you should ask the uh, school committee. Um, Mr. Bendel is a selectman. Mr. Bendel is a teacher at the, at the to tech. Get, to get specific uh, questions, though, yeah. you should be asking them on that. Well, side. you know, um, I was a little bit concerned because Mr. Bendel, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were on the negotiating subcommittee with the previous town manager. Is that correct? No. I think no. that's correct. No. You were not? Thank you for your comments. I thought you, 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 you negotiated with Jeff Hall's contract. Because after that, I saw the Shawshank Tech budget go up like a million dollars. Now he's making it. Thank okay. you for your comments. OK. Thank you And for so your lastly, comments, lastly, no, this, one, this question's for you, Mr. De Palma, because I don't want you to feel left out. And Mr. West's been left out. Yeah. That's right. I'll ask him a question, too. So uh, <laughs> Mr. De Palma. Um, you felt as though my comments earlier were not on point. So um, Mr. Giroux was kind enough to read you the profile that I drew for him, okay? Yeah, which, um, I like that at all. which shows um, the water table at the Swain School site. And as you know, um, a septic system, the bottom of a septic system has to be four feet above the water table which if it's um, rapid absorption, it has to be five I see feet. What you, I see what you're presenting oh, I know, here right I know, now. but I, I oh, know you don't understand it. Wait a minute. And I think this would be a question that you should ask uh, the building committee for the, for the uh, new town hall. Well, just, just I, my I, 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 sir. I'll do that. I appreciate that suggestion, but I wanted to make it crystal clear to you that when a septic system, see, the high school here has a forced main. It has a forced main, and nobody else is allowed to hook into that sewer system. So we have an issue here with a proposed, like, $38 million building that doesn't have sewer. And Mr. so if it has to have a septic system. Mr. Mr. McDonald, I, I understand. You don't need to interrupt me. Uh, Mr. McDonald, you're, I understand you're concerned with uh, elevations and, and the way the system's going in. Uh, but it's at this time. No, no, no. There's no system going in because there's not been any septic well, system approved or even you submitted. Should, you should there's no building them. permit. And but I I'm trying to make you calls, understand. Don't raise your voice. I'm just sir. trying to help you. Don't raise your voice. We don't have to. Okay, I'll speak a little softer then. Oh, okay, okay that's very nice okay. of you. Thank you. I don't want to hurt your feelings. No, because and that's it. For I, want, I want you to understand a, we that don't have to, we're not I think you represent the people in Wilmington. We, but we're not I mean, let's put it, uh, corre correction, you're supposed to represent the people in Wilmington. I question if you're we really do doing we don't that. don't represent people from out of town. You know, Mr. Uh, De Palma, the, like I said, the grade would have to get built that's up all, about Mr. seven that's feet. All now, Mr. No, no, Mr. no, 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 no. This is McDonald, kind of important stuff. I am stuff. not going to no, be no, no, no. sitting here I'm listening to a I'm sorry. Lesson. I'm, I'm trying not, to help I'm you not, out. I'm, I'm trying. Not sit here, sir, I'm trying to help to you out. On sep no, no, no. Systems. I'm not giving you a lecture. It, I'm just. I gave you a profile, and I'm trying to let you know that the elevation of the existing grade would have to be increased like seven feet. That's it. Okay. And um, I didn't appreciate at the finance committee meeting the town no, lawyers to telling people now, and yeah. bullying people uh, that hearing. they're not allowed public to public answer comments. questions. Let's town officials to can't answer questions. Any announcements? Okay, any new business? Happy Easter, everybody. Yes, happy, happy Easter. Easter. Amen. Enjoy happy it. Easter. Happy Easter. Important dates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
April 6th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. April 8th, select board, Town Hall, room 9, 7 p.m. April 8th through the 12th, curbside collection of leaves and grass. April 10th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. April 13th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. April 15th, town office is closed, Patriots Day. April 17th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. April 17th, last day to register to vote in the annual town election, annual town meeting, and the town clerk's office will be open until 5 p.m. April 20th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. April 20th, Little League Opening Day Parade, 9.30 a.m., which steps off, oh, that used to be the, uh, what, the July parking lot. Oh, right. <laughs> Still should be. Right? Oh, probably on the other side. Okay. We'll have to check on that. We'll get back to you where they're stepping off from. April 22nd, Board of Selectmen Town Hall, Room 9, 7 p.m. April 22nd through the 26th, curbside collection of leaves and grass. April 27th, annual town election. Polls open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. May 4th, annual town meeting. High school auditorium, 9 a.m. May 6th through May 10th, curbside collection of leaves and grass. And that is it for important dates, Mr. Uh, Chair, and happy Thank Easter. you, Mr. Temporary Town Manager. And now I'll turn the floor over to uh, Selectman Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the board tonight, it's my pleasure to present uh, tonight's salute to service to Mr. Ralph Belmore, who uh, joined the United States Army in uh, mm -hmm. December of 1952 out of Boston until uh, November of 1954. Uh, amongst the many awards he received were the Korean Service Medal with one Bronze Star, the Presidential Unit Citation, United States a service medal, National Defense Service Medal, and during the Korean War, the 21st Infantry, which he was a part of, took part in 10 campaigns, earning two presidential unit citations and two Republic of Korea presidential unit citations. And so, as a 60-plus year resident of Wilmington, uh, Mr. Belmore and his wife Ella raised three daughters and two sons in town. He loved traveling with his family and was a proud owner of Ralph's Dairy Delight. So mm -hmm. tonight, we salute Mr. Belmore. Thank you for your service. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, are we going into executive? Oh, wait a minute. That's right. I apologize. Mr. Chair, I move that we adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing strategies with respect of collective bargaining as it relates to the Wilmington Police supervis Supervisors and the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees Local 1703, Unit 2, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, sec Subsection 21A3, and not to return. Do I have a second? second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Do a roll call? Or? Good night, everyone. Oh, uh, roll call, please. Frank West, yes. William Maselli, yes. Greg Bendel, yes. Kevin Carey, yes. Garrett Harmer, yes. Good night. <laughs>